Well, hey, it's Joel, the 3D Printing Nerd, and right next to me here is the CR10. I was just going to give you an update on the printer, but I'm going to consider this my final thoughts. I'm going to continue to print with it, do cool stuff with it, but as far as I'm concerned, what I say here is going to be my, my final opinion that I may offer somebody. Let's first talk about this rocket right here. This is the rocket that I showed off in my first impressions of this machine. Uh, it's ribbed up on the nose cone, and I couldn't figure out why initially. I remember talking to Preston of Press Reset, and Preston said that it had to do with the fan speed at the very top. Uh, I didn't think that was right, because he gave examples of it being too flimsy and the fan being too powerful, but in other models I didn't have that experience. So I think I figured it out. This model has been increased in size in X and Y more so than on the Z, and I believe the geometry of the model is what lends itself to being this weird semi-symmetrical ribbed pattern on the nose cone, and here's, here's why I think that. Here is the same model printed in the same filament, slightly smaller, but the X, the Y, and the Z are all proportionately scaled, and if you look at this, you can see there's a very, very, very slight ribbing, but not nearly as much as this. So I think the issue of the ribbing on the nose cones for the rockets that I printed weren't because of the machine's overpowerful fan, but I think it was just the geometry of the model and how I scaled the model in the slicing software. So knowing that, and knowing that this rocket still had a very, very slight ribbing to it, I decided to print a different rocket model. This rocket uh, has four fins, whereas the other had three. It's in spiral mode, just like the other rocket. And the nose cone, you see no ribbing. No ribbing, which is perfect. And so this rocket is a good example of the capabilities of this printer because it's in vase mode, which of course lots of large printer manufacturers use to show off their machines because you can print something extremely fast and it looks great. And that's no exception here. This rocket printed in a few hours and it's glorious in nature. It's, it's, you, you cannot see the individual layers printed at 0.2 millimeter layers. It's astounding. It looks, it looks wonderful. I didn't just leave it with rockets. I wanted to print an actual model. Here, Josh, catch. Hey. This is, I believe, the Sorceress by Luby, Luby 3D. She's the one that also did uh, the sad face on Thingiverse when Just 3D Print It was stealing models. She's the one that has also done uh, many, many other fine pieces of art. This is no exception. This is meant to hold a pen or a stylus and the detail on the model is fantastic. I didn't do anything as far as dialing and settings. For this machine, I used the Uncle Jesse Simplify 3D profile found in the CR10 Facebook group, and I just hit print. You can see that the layers look wonderful, and the model is fantastic. I can, I can see a little bit of fuzziness just because of untuned retraction and temperature settings. This is the Orb Polymer PLA that I used, and uh, it, it's not perfect, but it looks incredibly well, and I would consider this to be a great model and a great example of what the CR10 is able to do with a 3D model. The Sorceress is great, but I also have my Maker Coin that I use to print examples of filaments and try to ascertain the abilities of 3D printers. And it looks great as well. There's, uh, the, the sidewalls look good. The layering is consistent. Uh, the, the indentation is perfect. This was printed at point two, and it looks good as well. I was really loving vase mode on this thing, so I tried to print another uh, vase in vase mode. Go figure. But I ran out of filament on this one. Ah, dang it. But luckily, I was able to load some Matter Hackers black Pro PLA that I actually have suspended on a clothing rod here in the office. If you follow me on Twitter, you would have seen a little video where I actually show that off. And it was it, it meant I was able to print this vase. This is a, a vase mode vase. But what I thought was really cool, uh, when you run out of filament on this machine, because it's a Bowden extruder, there's still filament left in the line. And when I fed the black filament in, there was still some of that gold PLA from Orb Polymer, and it just, it looked, it looked really cool. Uh, the black and the gold together could, 
could be a great color combination for something. So I'm gonna explore printing those two colors together. But, but right now, this vase itself, uh, I'm gonna find uh, a use for it because I, I really like it. Let's talk about one more model before we get to my thoughts on this machine. Uh, the Sorceress will move aside while we talk about this vase. I wanted to print something the full height of the machine and I wanted to print something in vase mode similar to the first rocket and I wanted to verify my thoughts on keeping everything scaled and having good geometry and this this model is an example of darn near perfection. This is Matterhackers Pro PLA on the CR10 using the Uncle Jesse Simplify 3D profile. Three bottom layers, no top layers. This is 0.2 millimeter layers at uh, in vase mode. I think it was 215 degrees on the nozzle, 60 degrees on the bed. I used a mixture of magic goo and PVA glue on the bed to hold it down. And it's it's darn near perfect. It is it is a great vase. And I'm gonna be honest with you, printing vases is kind of boring to me. Just big vases. It's not that exciting, but there's something about this vase that is fascinating and I love, I love it. This is great. But my buddy Josh, he's the one that chose this model. So Josh, behind the camera, hitting the camera. This is, this vase is for you. Aww. Yeah, here you go. That's for you. All right, so let's, let's get down to business here. Is this a good machine? Well, let's talk about that. The machine itself is 300 on the X, 300 on the Y, and 400 millimeters on the Z or Z. It's an MK10 uh, nozzle. It's got a Bowden style extruder with a with a Bowden tube that seems to fit. It was very easy to assemble. Um, the bed was a little loose just because I had to turn an eccentric nut, and that tightened it up right there. Uh, these orange racing stripes on the machine uh, are aren't there for uh, functionality. They're there to make it look different, I guess. So if you wanna take those off, you can. I left most of mine on. The spool holder they give you on the, on the brain of the machine is okay. But as you can see, I've got line coming in from above me. And really, just as long as you can get filament into this extruder up here, you're good to go. Running a huge spool means attaching it to your closet rod and then bringing it down underneath the spool holder and straight into the extruder of the CR-10. Go baby, go. There are add-ons you can print, and someone did print for me, so I can guide the filament into the extruder a little bit better. I can also provide some relief to the bed wires here in the back using a 3D printed add-on. I know, um, RC Life On also showed a different fan um, bracket to guide the air, and uh, I'm going to print that out and probably um, use that as well. What also with RC Life On, and part of the reason I'm calling this a final review is because um, he already talked about printing ABS and how you had to cover the machine because the bed could only get to 85 degrees and he needed to uh, insulate the area around it to keep the ABS print printing. And he did show off a wonderful print and it looks just choice. Uh, he also printed flexible filaments, which is great. I do plan on printing ABS and I do plan on printing flexible filaments on this machine. I just haven't had the opportunity to do that yet. So I'm going to lean on the experience of RC Life on. Uh, he's a reviewer that I trust. And so I, I know that it will work on this machine because it worked with his machine. Finally, let's, let's talk about the cost of this machine and how popular it is. One of the reasons why this machine is so popular is because it's so little in dollars to own it. It's, I think right now at GearBest, it's $426. They did have an active coupon for it, but because of my affiliate link, we sold quite a number of machines through that link enough to where they had to cancel the coupon code. At least that's what I was told. And their shipping dates have had to be moved out. The machine itself at 300 by 300 by 400 has a, a print volume of 36,000 cubic centimeters, which means that the price per cubic centimeter you're paying is a penny. You're paying one cent per cubic centimeter. That's, that's insane. In fact, if you take the Form 2, 
the Form 2 is quite near $1 per cubic centimeter. Granted, the Form 2 is an example of an SLA printer, while this is FDM and they're not the same technology, they, you wouldn't own them for the same reasons. It's just, I wanted to give you an example of one extreme because this is the other extreme. This machine is incredibly affordable for what it provides. And if you take into consideration the quality at which it can print, the materials at which it can print, the price you can get it for, and how easy it is to operate, it's quite easy to conclude that at the moment that I'm filming this, this is the best printer that you can get for your money. Yes, I love my Ultimaker 3. My Raze 3D N2 Plus is fantastic. My Form 2 prints crazy good. There is nothing that the Prusa i3 Mark II S cannot do. But because of the performance of this machine and the price you can get it at, this is it. This is the best thing you can buy for your money, hands down, right now. Well, there we go. That's my thoughts on this machine. Again, I'm going to continue to print with it, showcase it, answer questions about it. I hope you have questions on it that I'll be able to answer down the line. But do you agree with me or do you think I'm full of crap? I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, I will put links in the description to where you can get this. This machine was provided by GearBest and I will put a link to the GearBest store. That is my affiliate link to buy this printer. They've been having issues fulfilling orders in a timely manner, so you can go look on Banggood, you can go look on AliExpress, or you can go talk to Chris at Tiny Machines. All of these people have the CR10 printer, and all of them would be more than happy to sell it to you. I hope you found this enjoyable. I hope you found it informative. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks to everybody who lets the ads play, and thanks to my patrons who support me at patreon.com. Finally, don't forget to hug each other because I love you. As always, high five. High five, Josh. <laughs>